What up, doe? I'm Paige Kennedy, and welcome to Draw My Life. It all started on a dark night at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, Michigan, 1970. Uh, that doesn't matter. Bitch, forever young. I was the second of my parents' kids. The first one died, so that's when they tried again. I was born Felton Eugene Kennedy II, a name that we should never speak of again. And if you try and tell anyone, I will vehemently deny it. Felton sounds like a disease that you get on your feet. The Felton. <laughs> so two months after I was born, my dad was back to role playing as Django on my mama's head. Yep, he was the slave master. So from Detroit to LA is where I would learn the difference of living with my mom and living with my dad. Times were tough living with my mom. We stayed in a one bedroom apartment where I spent the majority of my time that I could remember alone on the floor watching Mork and Mindy and MASH, which I hated. And my mom, she was busy being a 20 year old, you know, oh yeah, and a drug addict. So eventually, I got too much for my mom to handle, and at six years old, she shipped me back to my dad in Detroit. Up until that point, the only thing I knew about my dad is the guy that bought me a football on my fifth birthday. Everything was opposite. I mean, the weather went from hot to cold as Eskimo nipples. I went from living in a one-bedroom apartment and being poor to living in a three-bedroom house with a basement. And from having a parent that was never there and me doing whatever I wanted to do to the strictest dad in the world, aka he beat me. I had a brother that lived with us and that was from my dad in a previous relationship. And just so you don't get confused, allow me to confuse you. So my dad had five kids with his own sperm, Regina, Roxanne, Natalie, Anthony, and me, the second. He also claimed my brother's two siblings that weren't actually his, Alvira and Timothy. Those three were from a white lady named Maria. And Regina, Natalie, and Roxanne were from a light-skinned lady named Janie, okay? Now my mom, she had a son before me who died. Then she had me. Then she had twins, Demetrius and Affectionate, who both died on Christmas Day and New Year's Eve. Then she had a son named Devin who was given up for adoption. Then she had my little sister, Latina. Okay, make sense now? Yeah, I didn't think so. So anyway, back to the story. Now my brother was 10 years older than me and he was a big influence on me. So he got me into rap music. I started learning Curtis Blow raps and ultimately started writing my own. First rap I ever did was called My Telephone. I kept this rap all the way through elementary school. I had this rap through grade school. Became like the number one rapper in my elementary school, my middle school, high school, hell, even college. And when I was 16 years old, I was fortunate enough to be able to go on tour with arguably the greatest rapper ever, the Notorious B.I.G. I also got to go on tour with Ice Cube. Those were some fun times. Now my dad, he gave up his position at the hospital to become a teacher of his own private practice teaching nurses how to get their RAN license. He wanted me to follow in his footsteps, but clearly I had other plans. My dad was the scariest man I've ever met. He was a doctor slash drug dealer. He shot people in both professions. He lit black candles on people. My dad was a complicated individual. I was really afraid of him because if I ever got in trouble at school, there were no tables he wouldn't crash my body through, knives he wouldn't throw at my head, fists he wouldn't try and tattoo my face with. But he did it all out of love, and I know that. Now. At 16, my beloved father died, leaving me all alone to fend for myself. Good thing he taught me how to be a man early in preparation. I finished high school and I went on my way to college to make my dad proud. I went to Grand Rapids Community College to play football with some teammates from high school. When I got cut, I had to do something else. In that time, I had two beautiful children by mistake. 
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Timothy and Kirsten. Lots of people are not ready to have kids when they have them, but sometimes it just happens. It's kind of like God forcing you to grow up and make you be ready. But I love them more than anything else in the world. These are the two best mistakes I ever had in my life. Except when they talk back and I have to beat them like Joe Jackson. <laughs> so that's when I got into theater. I always wanted to be a movie star, but I didn't have a movie major there, so this was the closest that I can get. I had some troubles getting cast when I first started auditioning for plays because I went to public schools in Detroit and I couldn't read as well or as fast as the other kids and by other I mean white. So eventually I went on to do a community theater show called The Piano Lesson by August Wilson, a black play. I never looked back since. I did all kinds of plays after that and most importantly I got into Shakespeare. Yeah, to be or not to be. <laughs> that is the motherfucking question. I went on to Western Michigan University where I continued to hone my craft. And I even went to graduate school at the University of Delaware to get my master's degree. I ended up leaving there in my first year to pursue my career in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. When I got to Hollywood, I didn't have any connects. I had a few family members, but no one that I really knew. Even though I was on my own, since I was 16 years old, my dad died, I had God as my parent. And I must have been at the right place at the right time because a month after I got to LA, I snuck into an audition at Sony Studios and I ended up getting cast as a series regular on a show called The Kennedys. <laughs> Ironic, right? From there, I went on to make over 35 other TV shows and over 15 films. I was able to star alongside of the biggest stars that you could think of. Starred in hit shows like Weeds as U-Turn, Desperate Housewives as Kaylin, Blue Mountain State as Radon Randall, hell, even SWAT. I mean, if you want to see more, then you have to go to my IMDB page. We only got so much time here. I still do my rap music even though no one pays me. And I found this little tool called YouTube where I figured out how I can give people who support me content that I create on my own. My story is still being written, but I hope that at the end of my life, I will be able to touch someone with my story of perseverance and faith. I'm an example of how if you believe in God and in yourself that no matter what happens in life, no matter where the stork dropped you off, you can have a choice to succeed and prosper. Anyway, I've been drawing so long that my hands have now turned white and grown fingernails. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. Anyway, have a fucking heart and subscribe. This took a long time to do, damn it. Thumbs up my video. I made it out the ghetto, biatch. But Kirsten, I remember you used to be the same way when you cried and peed on me all in the same day. Remember when I tried to get you to go and you said no? Cause you didn't want to, so you threw up all over the flow. And anything I bought you, it still wouldn't make you glow. Put the tissue up to your nose and then you still wouldn't glow. How you doing?